the Biden administration has just announced that millions of families will get much needed cash deposited into their bank accounts starting in July. The funds will come through the expansion of the child tax credit that was passed in the American Rescue Plan. This morning, the president explained. I'm announcing today that on July 15th and the 15th of every month thereafter throughout the year, you will get deposited in your bank account half of your tax cut at least, $250 per child each month, a direct deposit into your account. So if you're a working family with two kids, you're going to get $500 a month into your bank account on the 15th of every month starting July. So let's break this down. The first payment expected to go out to families on July 15th and every month thereafter until the end of the year. Parents who qualify will receive up to $300 per month for children five years old and under. Eligible families with children ages six to 17 years old will receive $250 per child. Roughly 39 million households are expected to benefit, and that balances out to about 65 million children. Struggling families reacted to Biden's child tax credit plan when it was initially proposed earlier this year. When I look at my budget, and it's just like, here's my mortgage over $1,000, and then here's child care, like $600 a month. It's just like, I have to work to be able to provide a living space for my children, but I also have to work to have a safe space for my children while I'm working. So it's just like, there's a, there's no win. We should put the, the politics of it aside and just understand that there are families and there are people out there hurting right now, and a little bit of help does tend to go a long way. Joining me now to discuss Jess Morales Rocchetto, the Civic Engagement Director of the National Domestic Workers Alliance. Also with us, economy reporter for the 19th, Chabeli Carasana. Thank you both for joining me, Chabeli. I want to start with you. What does this benefit mean for most families? What are sort of the basic economics of this? Yeah, I, I think, you know, some of the families that were just uh, speaking spoke to that a little bit, which is this is a bridge. This is the last bridge that they need to be able to afford child care, to afford diapers, to afford groceries. I mean, these are families that have gone without a lot of these things for the past year or have struggled to find them. And this money, and I was just talking to a, a mother earlier today about this, She's like, you know, this is not going to stop me from going to work. What this is going to do is allow me to pay for the groceries for my kids that I've been home for a year and I've had to double uh, the cost of that throughout the entire year. And so it's it's really just sort of patching things together uh, for families and it's doing it monthly versus annually so that particularly low income families can start to use the funds uh, much quicker. Just. We know the pushback. Critics say this is another form of UBI, that it's going to keep people from getting out there to get a job. What is your response to all that? Listen, the workers that I work with want to go back to work. They want to get out of their house. They love being around their kids, but maybe they would like a little extra space away from them. So the fact that we're reopening <laughs> is huge. But <laughs> a little bit, a little bit. But the, but the fact we're reopening is huge. But there has been very little to support folks who have been out of work for almost a year. And we have this a looming threat of um, unemployment insurance being cut. And so I think it's absolutely ingenious that the Biden administration is working to get cash into folks' hands because this is what they need to be able to make sure that they can do the basics, food, rent, phone bill. Um, so I think this is a great idea. It's exactly what we're hoping the Biden administration will do around care more broadly. How do we make care affordable and how do we make sure that everybody has what they need to be able to take care of their families? Can you talk just a little bit more about that? Just when you talk about care broadly, I think very often when we talk about care and the care economy, we tend to frame it in terms of children and parents. That is, of course, how I frame it, because that is my lived experience. But when we're talking about care, we're talking about a much broader swath of Americans who are actually impacted by this issue. That's right. I mean, you're not only talking about the people who receive the care, you're also talking about family caregivers, many of whom uh, don't conceptualize this as a job, but are certainly putting in the hours and the time of it as a job. And you're, of course, talking about the workers that I represent, care workers, domestic workers, house cleaners, elder care workers, and nannies who are making that care possible. And I think all of this 
is us together in a real uh, tapestry of people who are providing the, what we call the care economy. The more people who can get care, the more people who can get back to work. And the more that we can take you know, the, to- the emotional toll off people's minds in this time that their loved ones are cared for. Um, and I think that is one of the most important parts about this. We're dealing with enough in this pandemic. We shouldn't have to worry about how we're gonna pay for the care that our families need. Chabelle, getting to the point where care was seen as a critical issue. I mean, the Biden administration has you know, positioned it as a question of infrastructure, but, but I'm also just speaking about politically, economically, where people were seeing it as as serious in terms of job creation as a business, you know, seeing it as seriously political, politically as things that they might see as, as more basic issues. It, it wasn't until the pandemic that it was as if like a light bulb went off and all of that work that had been done, all the groundwork that had been laid, people sort of more generally began to realize that child care is a crucial part of the economy. I mean, you were one of my f- absolute favorite reporters on this beat. When you look back at the past year, sort of what are your reflections about how we got to this moment where the Biden administration, I mean, yeah, they're going to have to go out and sell this, but it's not going to be the same sell they would have done a year and a half ago. Yeah, and I think that's exactly it. The pandemic was what recalibrated this conversation completely. I mean, you know, if you're a working parent in this country, if you're a home health care, health, home health aide, a child care worker, this is not new to you, this country. The entire country is a child care desert, right? Uh, home health aides have been struggling for years. Parents have been struggling for years. The difference was Here came the pandemic, everyone was at home, everyone was dealing with it across the socioeconomic spectrum. It became a reality. You're you're seeing the headlines one after the other after the other this year. I mean, half of our population was struggling to get back to work, women largely, because of these care responsibilities. It stunted our recovery. It continues to, we continue to struggle to recover because we do not have this infrastructure in place because the pandemic is still a problem and so these two things together have just caused this this issue that has been there for a really long time to be completely unavoidable i mean the child tax credit you know representative rosa deloro from connecticut has been talking about expanding it for 23 years it took getting here for us to actually do it Right, because just 23 years ago is being treated like a ladies' issue, right? And it certainly does disproportionately impact women, both as those who give the care and those who rely on the care. At the beginning of 2021, about 10 million mothers were out of the workforce. The Census Bureau says that is an increase of 1.4 million from 2020. We know that the Biden administration is pushing for child care to be part of this infrastructure plan, calling it human infrastructure. What do you want to see in the plan as it relates to the care economy more broadly? The most important thing to us is to make sure that home health care workers are provided for. Um, a often untold story in this is not just how much it costs to get care for families, but also what workers are like on the job, what, it, what the conditions are like for them. In domestic work jobs, home health care jobs are low wage jobs. And this should not only concern people who are concerned about domestic workers, but actually should concern all of us. Home health aides are one of the fastest growing sectors of the economy. And that means that the jobs of the future are not well-paid jobs. They're jobs that are extremely vulnerable. So it's really important for this to be a down payment on the future of our economy, making sure that this explosion of jobs that's about to happen in home health care are good jobs where people can make a living and help lift up the economy overall in the long term. Shabali, one of the things that you have underlined over and over again in your reporting, and I have tried to follow in your seat in doing that, is that when we're talking about women in the workforce, when we're talking about moms in the workforce, the experience varies widely by race and by ethnicity. So non-white single moms were hit hardest. What are some of the factors that contribute to that? And as policymakers are reimagining a care economy, how do they take into account the racial inequities that also exist within that economy? I think it comes with a profound understanding of this history of occupational segregation that we have in this country. We cannot ignore it. It is 
it is obvious in each of these jobs that were particularly hard hit, right? So we've talked about the hospitality jobs that went away, home health aid jobs, uh, nursing jobs, retail jobs. Yes, it's majority women, but really it's majority women of color. It's a lot of black women, a lot of Latinas. They are the ones who are concentrated in these jobs. We need to understand that. And so that is why they have been hit harder. We're talking about this child tax credit, the child poverty rate. I mean, this could really uh, benefit half, half of all black and Latinx kids. It's, 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 a, it's a huge proportion and it's because of the jobs that their parents are in. Um, and so there is uh, an understanding, I think, from the administration that there needs to be concerted effort to reach yeah. this population. And so, um, you know, we're, we're, we're gonna see how, how they roll that out because a promise of cutting child poverty in half is a big promise. And especially if you're reaching families that have never had to, you know, never filed an income tax that are not in the system that are difficult to reach, how do you reach them? Because reaching them is really how you cut it in half. Jess Morales Ricardo Chabeli Carasana, thank you both so much for joining me. I appreciate your insights always. Hi, I'm Mehdi Hassan. Thanks for checking out our channel on YouTube. You can see more of the Mehdi Hassan show by clicking on any of the videos on this screen and make sure you subscribe below to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. Thank you for watching.